Hi, Marty Dwyer with Boat Anchor Audio. We recently purchased off eBay a Class D audio amplifier PCB. It uses the popular TPA 3255 manufactured by Texas Instrument. Uh, so we thought we'd put it on the bench, run it through our audio analyzer, and see what kind of results we got. Uh, the analyzer we use is the Quantasylum QA403. It's a software-based machine. Uh, it runs a number of tests, and it can measure THDs down to a level of oh, minus 115 dB, which is pretty good. Uh, anyway, here's a picture of the board. When you've seen one, you've pretty much seen them all. But I have a suspicion, though, even though they may look similar, uh, they're not going to perform in the same manner. If you read through the spec sheet, the data sheet that TI has for the 3255, you get the impression that how well this works is going to be a function of the printed circuit board design and parts placement, as well, of course, as, as the quality of the parts. Anyway, we were not expecting very much from this. So let's go through the test and find out what we found. And... Uh, we were a little surprised, to tell you the truth. Okay, here we go. All right, now the first test we're going to run here, you might call this a basic test. Uh, what we've done here is put in a, a signal of minus 20 dBV, or in other words, 100 millivolts, into the audio analyzer, and we're taking a look at the output of the Class D amplifier. Now, what do we have up here? Let's take a look at the gain, left gain, right gain. It's about 27.5 dB, which is essentially what you would expect. And notice how the gain on both channels is almost identical. Let's take a look at the total harmonic distortion. Left channel, right channel, minus 98 dB, minus 97.6 dB. These are pretty good numbers for a $30 amplifier board. Okay, now let's take a look at the total harmonic distortion plus the noise, left channel, right channel. As to be expected, it's not as good as the THD uh, without the noise. Minus 82 on the left channel, minus 82 on the right channel. All in all, it's still pretty good. It's not bad. Remember, this cost $30. Let's take a look at the signal to noise ratio. We've got 83 dB on the left, and 83 dB on the right. Again, it's not all that bad. The output power into 8 ohm dummy load is approximately 700 milliwatts, left channel, right channel. And notice that the channels are relatively equal. They're almost identical. So that's pretty good. And as I've said, it's a 1kc signal at minus 20 dBV or 100 millivolts. This, of course, is the, uh, the 1KC signals, and these are naturally are your harmonics here, second, third, fourth harmonic is really buried down there, fifth harmonic. Now, let's do something else. Let's take a look and see what happens when we increase the output from minus 20 dB and increase it to minus 10 dBV. We'll take a look at that in a second. All right, now here's the same board, the same test setup. The only thing we did differently is increased the output of the audio generator or the Quantasylum audio analyzer. We increased it from minus 20 dBV to minus 10 dBV or in other words 316 millivolts. In other words, we've increased the output from 100 millivolts to 316 millivolts. That is the output of the analyzer or the input to the board same difference. Let's take a look. The gain numbers are essentially the same, 27.5 dB, which you'd expect. The uh, THD is pretty much the same, uh, 95, minus 95 on the left channel, uh, minus 93.4 on the right channel. One thing that did change is the THD plus N is somewhat better now. It's minus 90 on the left channel, minus, just about minus 90 on the right channel. Take a look at the signal to noise ratio. That's improved a little bit. 
92.7 left channel, 92.7 or 92.8 on the right channel. Now this is going into an 8 ohm resistive dummy load. We've got 7.1 watts on the left channel and 7 watts on the right channel. So the channels are pretty well balanced. As I said, this is 1kc signal minus 10 dBV or 316 millivolts. Let's take a look at some other tests here. All right, now one test most people are, re are interested in is the frequency response. This is frequency response from 10, actually I think we have it set up from about 10 cycles up to about 25 kc. As you can see, it's not bad at all. Uh, this, of course, this here is your gain in dB. You have the left channel, right channel, and if you look carefully, you can see these channels are right on top of one another. The gain is just about the same. There's a little, you can see a little change there. The, uh, the left channel and the right channel have diverged a little bit. All in all, this is pretty good. Again, we're talking $3 here. We're, so here we have about, oh, a gain of, say, 20, almost 28 dB up to, say, 20 kcs. And it's a little bit higher than 28 dB. To make a long story short, this is pretty flat all the way up from 10 cycles to 20 kc. Now, what's this? Now, this is typical of a lot of Class D amplifiers, and apparently this is caused by the filtering that they use at the output of the amplifier. As you know, a Class D amplifier is, uh, it's been chopped up pretty good. Uh, they use uh, the pulse width modulation, I guess you'd want to call it. And they put something in there to filter the noise out. And on many of these Class D amplifiers, it results in a peak here. Now this thing is right there, for example, you got 30 kcs. You're probably not going to hear this unless you have the hearing of a bat. But this is outside of the audible range for most people. For myself, I'm lucky I can hear anything over about 4 kcs, but that's another story. All right, let's see what else we've got to take a look at. All right, here we have intermod distortion. Now we'll go through this very briefly. It's the intermod distortion. The test we use is the uh, Society for Motion Pictures and, and uh, Television Engineers Society. Now that's a recognized test. And there's a number of tests out there, and some of them are pretty bizarre, to say the least. Uh, there's at least a half a dozen tests. Some of them are bizarre and downright esoteric. So we're going to stick with this guy here. It's a recognized test. Again, Society for Motion Pictures and Television Engineers. Let's take a look at this. As you can see, we start with an analyzer output, or to say the same thing using different words, this is the input to the amplifier board. We start at minus 20 dBV, and we end the test at minus 10 dBV. Now, as you would expect, the distortion, the IMD, goes up with the output. But still, this really isn't that bad. Again, this is... Uh, one other thing, this may or may not have an effect on it. I didn't check it, but we're using a power supply supplying 20 volts to this. Now, this Class D amplifier, which I have, can run up to 40 volts. Now, perhaps if we put 40 volts in there instead of 20, perhaps these numbers would be a little bit better. I don't know. It's something I'm going to have to try and, and see what happens when we do that. Now, you might be a little curious about where these IMD numbers came from, but run through it very quickly here. What we're doing essentially is having two signals beat against each other. Now, for the test that we used, you have a 60-cycle signal and a 7KC signal. The 60-cycle signal is about, well, it's exactly four times the amplitude of the 7KC signal. They beat together. The result is you get sidebands. All right, there you have it, a series of tests done on a $30 uh, Brand X board we got off of eBay. Our next series of tests are going to be done on a commercially made name brand audio amp 
that also uses the TPA 3255 and we're going to see how the two of them compare. Should be interesting. So until then, uh, keep those electrons flowing. <laughs> see you later.